Hello everyone, this is Nitpicky Nerd, and today I want to review the show called Future Man, which I only recently discovered. I never heard about this show before, it's a few years old, and I never heard anyone talking about it, so I kind of stumbled upon it by accident, and I watched it, and I really enjoyed, uh, especially the first season, I think is really good. The second season is not as good in my opinion, it gets better toward the end, and the third season is better than the second, but not as good as the first. And the good thing is the first season kind of stands on its own, it's its own story with its own ending, and so you can basically just watch the first season, and you don't have to continue it if you don't want to, even though the second season does have some hilarious moments and some really good scenes and some uh, neat ideas, especially toward the end of the season, and the third season is enjoyable overall, even though it does have a lot of boring parts in it, so only the first season is really good in my opinion. And it's basically a science fiction comedy show, which is kind of parodying a lot of other well-known movies uh, like Terminator and uh, Back to the Future and all those kinds of movies. And another nice uh, thing in this show is that they constantly admit where they take the inspiration from. Like uh, they don't just rip it off without giving credit. They always mention that it's always oh, like in that other movie that especially the main character is aware of. He's kind of a nerd. He's a gamer. So he constantly mentions all those movies which the situation is similar to. And the biggest similarity is to the Terminator franchise because uh, these two characters that come from the future are coming from uh, a dystopian wasteland in which humanity is almost extinct because they're being hunted not by robots but by some genetically engineered monsters who are trying to exterminate the remainder of the normal humans. And so they came back from the future to recruit the main character who is kind of like John Connor, I guess. And they did it by planting a computer game in the past, which shows exactly the kind of situations they're facing in the future. And he's the only one who managed to finish that whole game. And so they come back from the future for him because they think that he's going to be their savior. But then they're very disappointed because he's just kind of a nerd. He just knows how to play a computer game, but doesn't know how to fight in real life and all of that. The way they recruited him using a computer game, he said that's like in the movie The Last Starfighter, which was also about the main character winning some uh, video game. And he suggests the idea that instead of uh, winning the war in the future, that they instead try to change that future from happening. And so they constantly go back further to the past to try to prevent the scientist who invented the cure for herpes, which led to the creation of those genetically engineered augmented people in the future. And so those two guys want to simply kill that scientist, but Josh, the main hero, wants to avoid killing him. So instead he tries to prevent him from ever becoming a scientist by preventing him from getting herpes in the first place, which led to him becoming a scientist to try to cure it. And so they constantly jump back to all kinds of different periods in the past to try to change the life of that scientist to a different direction. And so one episode they're in the 60s and another episode they're in the 80s. And there's a lot of nostalgia stuff for those time periods as well. Every time they go back, they kind of poke fun at the things in that time period. And also they accidentally change all kinds of other things. And when they go back to the present, it's always slightly different, which is also funny. And there's a lot of stuff similar to Back to the Future, especially in that episode when Josh accidentally prevents his parents from hooking up and then has to fix it and almost accidentally sleeps with his own mother by accident. And it's all done much uh, more gross, much more crude than it ever was in the Back to the Future movies, which was family friendly. This show, by the way, is not family friendly. It has a lot of gross humor, a lot of sexual jokes, a lot of stuff like that a lot of dark comedy, a lot of violence and nudity and all of that. So it's definitely not for everyone, not for the whole family. So in one episode, he almost sleeps with the younger version of his own mother, which was obviously inspired by Back to the Future. And in some ways in the show, it's done even funnier than in that movie. And you know, in Back to the Future, they always use the same actors. Whenever they were in the present, they simply use the makeup to make them look older. Here, they use different actors altogether, which also makes the surprise work because they don't instantly recognize who is who and all of that. Uh, even though his father, they picked an actor who looks almost identical to him, only younger. And so that was really good. And it's not just his looks, but also the way he speaks, the way he moves, the way all his mannerisms are identical. And so it was really funny. And so some of the situations were even better and funnier than in the Back to the Future movies. 
And there's a lot of references to all kinds of pop culture stuff from the different time periods. And there's a whole episode which uh, is kind of almost worshipping James Cameron. Like uh, across the whole season they kept talking about how the fuel for their time machine is something called Cameronian. And then later on it's revealed it's some kind of substance which was discovered by the scientist James Cameron who became the father of modern science in the future or something like that. And then they have to go into his house in the future to try to steal more Cameronian and so the whole house was like uh, worshipping all the movies of James Cameron and so I personally was really loving it because I do like a lot of the movies that James Cameron made a lot of them inspired this show obviously and so they kind of paid homage to all those kinds of movies and at some point I thought it was kind of too much they were kind of praising James Cameron like some kind of god but then in the end they kind of showed him to be an asshole as well they kind of poked fun at all the nasty stuff that he supposedly did and all of that and these two guys from the future who the woman is called Tiger and the guy is called Wolf and uh, there was some flashback scenes from their dystopian future and it showed that all the resistant fighters they're all named after animals and it was also a funny scene so anyway, they are like uh, Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor, the T2 Sarah Connor, and kind of exaggerated the way they come from a brutal future, and they're kind of, uh, they're like fish out of water in uh, present time, and also in all the other time periods they visit, they don't know how to behave, they don't know how to act, so that was really funny, and especially the wolf character, in my opinion, was hilarious, and the actor who plays him is excellent his name is Derek Wilson and I think I only realized how good of an actor he was uh, only in a scene in season two when they show an alternate version of the same character from a different timeline and uh, in that timeline he's like a computer nerd he's the complete opposite of the one we know and he played it so well like he acted so differently in that scene that I barely recognized that's the same guy. So that's when I realized what a great actor he is, that he's able to be so versatile and all of that. And also he's very adaptable. Like whenever he's in some different time periods, he always finds a way to become successful in that time period and all of that. So a lot of the funniest stuff in the show is about him in the different time periods in which at first he's a fish out of water and then quickly adapts and becomes very successful in whatever time period he's in. And the main character of Josh, which uh, at first they thought is going to be their John Connor, but then were disappointed. So he's more like Marty in Back to the Future. And I like how he's the only one with a sense of morality. Like he keeps trying to prevent these two from killing everyone in their way and instead find other ways to solve the problem. And as much as they try to change the future, it's still uh, the bad future still keeps happening somehow. And so they have to get more and more extreme in their attempts. And the main plot does get resolved in the end of season one. And so technically you can stop the show there. You don't really have to continue it. And in some ways I don't even recommend the second season because it starts out pretty bad. It's not the same show anymore. Like in the first season, it was much more episodic. There were those uh, smaller adventures that they have to go to some different time period every episode. And it had like self-contained stories. And so the pacing was much better. However, in the second season, it's more like uh, many of today's shows in which it's one long, boring story which is stretched out for a whole season. So there is no one episode which has its own isolated story which is uh, with a satisfying conclusion. So that's one of the reasons I didn't enjoy season two. It was also less funny, just uh, half the season was kind of boring. Like the setting is that uh, they did change the future, but it's now a different kind of dystopian future. And it's still basically like a wasteland. Also, they kind of lost their time machine for most of the season, so they're not using it. So they're stuck in the same time period for most of the season. And the setting is kind of like the wasteland in Fallout. People live in junk towns and it's like in the far future, but it's also primitive at the same time. People were using the keys from computer keyboards as their money. That really reminded me of how in the first Fallout games, People were using bottle cups uh, as their money and so it's uh, a lot of similar ideas like that and there was like a, a big villain of the season who is like the leader of a more advanced uh, settlement and he's like a hologram and he has a brain in a jar hidden somewhere and he's actually a character who was in season one but he was like a minor character who was kind of annoying and in the second season they made him like an immortal evil bad guy in the future and he's played by that actor who played a lot of cute kids in a lot of famous movies i forgot his name i'm sorry and you know as an actor he was really good as a child actor but whenever i see him in any movies as an adult 
he's not really that great. I guess they kind of picked him because he kind of looks cute and they try to make him like uh, complicated. So he's kind of the evil bad guy in the future who wants to exterminate the remainder of humanity or to enslave the ones who are left. So there's a lot of similarities to the Fallout games in this scenario, but the season overall was mostly boring and there's a lot of annoying things in it. There was one really funny scene which was kind of a flashback uh, about James Cameron which I mentioned. That's probably the funniest scene in the whole show and I almost cannot go into the details because in order to explain it I will have to tell you so many things that happened in season 1 just to get the joke. And so even if you look it up and you watch the scene you probably wouldn't get why it's so funny because it kind of ties together many things from the previous season into this one event. So anyway, season 2 was uh, much worse than the first one, very boring, there was that really funny scene about James Cameron which I mentioned, which kept me going, and toward the end of the season it did get better, and there's even some brilliant stuff in the end, when they actually got the time machine back in their hands, and used it in creative ways which were kind of original, even not really inspired by any movie that I've seen, and so that was kind of interesting, even though it's kind of illogical, why didn't they simply use the time machine, to jump back in time, to prevent this whole future from existing, like fixing this whole future. Instead, they decided to simply fix the situation in their present, in that future they're in, maybe because they connected with the people in that time period and they want to save them. And by that point, it also kind of established that uh, whenever they change the past, they simply create an alternate timeline, like they don't actually fix the same timeline. So maybe that's why they decided not simply to run away from the situation, but to fix it by defeating the evil villain. And the villain has uh, his brain hidden in some secret location and they know where it is but they cannot get to it because it has so many defenses on the way. So they found a way to distract the villain for 15 seconds in which they can go through that corridor but it will take them a few minutes to get all the way to his brain and so they use the time machine to jump back 15 seconds multiple times as they go through the corridor. And the time machine only teleports them through time and not space, even though you know Earth is moving and rotating, which is something that uh, many time travel movies kind of forget, that they think that uh, it only moves you through time and not space, and yet if you actually jump in time, the Earth is not in the same location as it was. But anyway, let's say that uh, it's somehow stuck to the same exact location on Earth in all the time periods that it jumps to. So anyway, because of this, they decide to use the time machine as a way to get through that long corridor with a bunch of defenses in those 15 seconds they have before the defenses come online. And so they keep running in the corridor and teleport themselves back in time 15 seconds each time so that they can stay in that window of time in which the defenses are down. And as they go through the corridor doing that, they hear and then see the previous versions of themselves in those same 15 seconds from the previous jumps. And so more and more copies of themselves are behind them. And then those copies realize that, uh, you know, by that time, they know that uh, if they change the past, they don't really erase the alternate versions of themselves. And so those uh, copies of themselves from uh, behind them realize that they don't actually have to keep going because... The team at the front is going to reach their target anyway. They don't have to keep jumping to become them. Like it's an alternate version of themselves. And so there's like multiple copies of themselves in the past. And many of them start uh, saying, wait, we have free will. We can simply use the time machine to escape to the past and save ourselves. Otherwise, all of us are going to get killed except the team at the front. All the other teams are going to die off when the defenses come online. And so some of those uh, other copies of themselves decide to use the time machine to jump to the past to escape, which creates havoc in the timeline, which is uh, the main plot of season 3, basically. So anyway, they save humanity in the end of this season, but then time police from the future shows up to arrest them because of the time crimes they committed. Which leads to season 3, in which they're in a futuristic prison, it's like thousands of years in the future, and the justice system of the future is tied with entertainment, meaning it's like in that movie The Running Man, when prisoners are given a chance to fight for their freedom, for the entertainment of people watching and all of that. So it's like a game show and somehow they're able to escape from there and then they steal a time machine from one of those uh, time cops from the future and then they try to hide in the past uh, in different time periods and any time they leave any clue of themselves behind in the past, the time cops immediately show up. And the funniest episode was probably the one when they are in Russia and they make a deal with some Russian woman to stay at her farm in exchange for doing all the labor work for her. And then uh, Wolf uh, isn't able to sleep 
in the barn and so in order to be able to sleep in a normal bed he kind of seduces that woman to sleep with her and he tries really hard to satisfy her and then later on she writes an erotic book about all of this and then that's how they find them in the future when they found that book which mentions him and so season three is much better because they finally jump all over time once again like in the first season and so there's more individual stories and there's more variety of locations and situations and so it is much better than season two however not really as good as season one especially because it felt like their ideas are running out like the start of season three was pretty good and solid and funny and then toward the end it once again kind of became boring they kind of got stuck in some place outside of time in which time is not moving and there are celebrities of many different time periods which uh, an alternate josh one of the ones who escaped into the past, he, he tried to save all the people who died prematurely and he put them into this uh, special place together. And so they're stuck in that place for like a few episodes in a row and that's when it started getting boring again. Even though it did have a lot of funny scenes and moments and there's parodies of all kinds of famous people from the past and all of that is good. But the show kind of became kind of illogical, like uh, the main plot starts getting all over the place and not really making much sense. And you know, I thought about uh, drawing like a diagram of all the events in the show to try to explain them, but in the last season it kind of became all over the place without any real logic to it. And so it kind of becomes pointless to try to make sense of all of it since uh, it's just crazy by the end with all kinds of things happening randomly, you know, timelines colliding and things appearing out of thin air from different timelines, all that kind of stuff which is more like magic and fantasy and so there's almost no point to try to explain any of that and you know because the show is comedy I'm kind of okay with all of that also you know visually the show is not really that expensive like it's very cheap looking in a lot of places like the special effects and action scenes and sets are not movie level like it's mostly kind of cheap looking but because it's a comedy show because it's not taking itself too seriously, it's kind of silly and comedic that allows it to get away with it. Like I'm willing to forgive it because it was uh, entertaining despite of that. So to summarize my thoughts on the show, I definitely recommend season one for anyone who likes uh, science fiction and time travel stories and uh, a lot of it is parodies of other better movies obviously but uh, it is very enjoyable as a parody of all those kinds of stuff. Uh, there are a lot of juvenile jokes as I mentioned, a lot of silly stuff, a lot of uh, dark comedy, a lot of gross humor which not everyone likes and uh, there are some subplots which don't really go anywhere which are not that funny but overall season one was pretty good and it is its own self-contained story so you can basically just watch the first season season two was kind of a chore to get through at first i didn't like the first half of the season toward the end it does get better and season three is almost like a reverse of that it starts out really good and then it gets kind of boring toward the end and kind of becomes all over the place by the very end and at least the show does have an ending it does have kind of a satisfying conclusion it does have a lot of really funny scenes which i do recommend but you have to get through some boring episodes once in a while and you kind of have to watch all of them simply to get what's going on because it is kind of building upon itself like it keeps tying back to things that happened previously so to get some of the jokes later on you have to watch all of it unfortunately so i cannot recommend skipping any seasons or episodes maybe you know the first half of season two i guess technically can be skipped another interesting detail is the appearance of the double blinking tubes without function which is a prop that appeared in hundreds of science fiction movies and episodes i actually made uh, several compilations showing how this prop was everywhere in science fiction movies and that's the kind of little detail in the background that only real hardcore science fictioners like me would notice but I really appreciate this show for spending the effort to do this for people like me. So that's kind of my thoughts on it. So I do recommend the show for anyone who loves those kinds of movies I mentioned. Let me know what you think and we can discuss it in the comments below. And I will see you all next time. Bye bye.